Song Revolution with John Chisholm on the NRT Podcast Network. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Season 2 of Song Revolution. I'm so glad that you're here. Now, this week, VP of Publishing for Centricity Music, Chad Segura, is returning to the show, and we had a fantastic talk about his early musical development to become one of the most successful publishers in Nashville as he represents and works directly with songwriters and artists like Lauren Daigle, Need to Breathe, Andrew Peterson, Kobe James, Brandon Heath, Jordan Felice, Chris Renzema, Jason Gray, one of our favorites, Unspoken, and many more incredible music makers on the Centricity Music label. We talk about why melody is so important to him as he manages publishing for some of the top Christian artists impacting the world, and we went deep into how experiencing art of all kinds can inspire writers and artists to express themselves at even higher levels and learn how to invite listeners into an emotional space that makes their music just that much more compelling. We talked about music, film, and why he likes the Marvel comics so much, and why Die Hard is his favorite movie of all time. We talked about what he's really looking for as a Nashville publisher so that you can level up your songwriting and get closer to your artistic dreams. We talked about writing for sync placements in TV and film, remembering your passion for songwriting if you've lost it, and how to blend authenticity with commercial songwriting. This is just a great peek into pro music publishing and CCM record making that you're going to enjoy. So please welcome Centricity Music's VP of Publishing and my great friend, Chad Segura. Chad, man, thanks for stopping by the Chiz Pod today. My pleasure. Yeah. Happy to be here. You're just a couple of miles down the road, Centricity. Is yep. Kind of in the hood Very close. here. And I love the offices. I love you're over a pizza parlor. Yes, we are. Do you get tired of smelling it? You know, honestly, I don't know if it's the concrete floors or whatever, but it's it's pretty much impossible to smell it, which is which is good. We when the windows are open just at the right time, we've got, you know, as you know, we've got good Mexican food nearby too. So it's kind of competing smells, but those are two really good smells. Yeah. So coffee and coconuts yeah. right across the true. roadway. And now in our yeah. in our neighborhood, I mean, we're in my home studio and we now at the bottom of our neighborhood have Mojo's Tacos. Oh, see? There do you, you like go. Mojo's? I do. Big yeah. tent? Yeah. Yep. We're going to grab some lunch, aren't we? Sweet. Today, maybe? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Those chips, man. It's addictive. But yeah, so thanks for stopping by. I mean, I, we had you on the show early on in season one. Yes. Can't believe it. We have uh, 150 episodes, Oof. somewhere in the neighborhood of 140,000 downloads. And do you download podcasts? Because I don't. I just listen. I, you know what? I used to. I used to yeah. download them. Now I just stream them. Yeah. 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 I mean, sure. why download and, you know, fill up your phone or right. something? Right. But so who knows how many people have actually I listened? Yeah, right. And it, we, we're still getting somewhere with no, we don't do any any real marketing. I'm starting to, but by the time this episode's heard, we will be spending real money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we're still getting anywhere from 800 to 1,200 downloads every month, That's just awesome. kind of in the legacy thing. And I haven't put out a show since Bear Reinhardt a year ago, Need to Breathe. Oh, wow, yeah. Mm-hmm. Love that show. Oh, yeah. yeah. So when I look back and I think of the powerful people that have been on here, the artist, we've had a lot of, I mean, you, John Mays, we've had different legacy executives, mm. people that helped pioneer this. But when I look at you and look at what you're doing as VP, of publishing at Centricity and see all the the really wonderful artists, the boutique nature mm. of Centricity. It's like I I see art, real art being made, and you're you are a huge part of that, man. You are an artist in your own right, and so I thought it'd be fun today before we go pig out on some yeah. tacos. <laughs> man, that brisket taco down there. I'm already hungry. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but before we go, we go. You're not getting any kickbacks from uh, Mojo's. No, right? no, no, so. no. I'm trying to get him in as a sponsor. Yeah, but, okay. But to really kind of dig in, not so much about how publishing works, because we've kind of covered that in a lot of other yeah. places, but maybe dig into you as an artist, because you're listening through thousands of songs every year, all of the hopefuls, plus mm. all of the people that you're committed to working with. Yeah. So. 
Take us into the genesis, maybe, of your own musical development and talk about what, what was the first time that you just knew something had shifted in your soul yeah. musically? Yeah. Gosh. You know, it was funny. I was actually just thinking about some of that stuff just recently. I think we took, we did talk about it. So if anyone happens to have heard the, the one I was on earlier. <laughs> it's okay. It's um, been a few years. It, you know, for me, you know, obviously melody and lyric, those are the two, those are the two things. Those are the things under copyright law that make a song. There's all kinds of new stuff now that kind of gets in there with right. production and other things that now get factored in. But really at the core, you got melody, you've got lyric. Both amazing. I love things about both, but as as I mentioned before, and I'm I'm just unabashed in my love of great melody, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that kind of draws me in. And I do remember being, you know, a little kid and riding around in the car with my dad, you know, in in particular because he he has always a, been a lover of music as well, and just you know playing through the the pop stations and just you know when songs would just hit you and and move you and. But do you remember the first one? Man. Can you remember? Can you man, name the, 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 the first... first song? I can. I okay, can. You, I can. You go. You All right, go. I'm going to go first. You go. you go. Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. My mom took me to the Woolworth, mm -hmm. and I bought the Beatles Paperback Writer. Paperback Writer. <laughs> Whatever oh, yeah. it was. Oh, yeah. And that was the moment. Now, my parents were very musical. They were bluegrass yeah. musicians. My dad played every stringed instrument known to God and man and was really good. Right. My mom played harmonica and keys, and they were really pretty killer for amateur musicians. Yeah. And my dad was pretty much an audiophile, and we heard everything in our house from Flat and Scruggs to Mahler. And... And I I grew up on Jethro Tull, David Bowie, mm. Johnny and Edgar Winter, grew up in Memphis, yeah. Tennessee. So, you know, B.B. King. But I was exposed to all kinds of things, but it was paperback writer that just opened up something in my soul. Yeah. So, all right. So you've had time to think while I've been yakking. Yeah. Up, no, I mean, I, one, I want one song. I, I, love all, <laughs> I love all that stuff. It is interesting. I mean, you're. I'm glad you can edit because I cause, cause I do have to think about it you're for a good, second. You're good. And if you don't it, have one, uh, that's cool too. But you know, I mean, I remember multiple things. It's funny. I love that you pulled out a Beatles reference because because you know that's epic, and and mine are not going to be epic like that because it's funny. It's it's funny what moves you. You know, when you find yourself when something hits you. I do I do remember. I grew up for the most part in in good old Salem, Oregon, the little known capital uh, mm. of, of Oregon. But we did spend about a year and a half when I was young in Eugene, where my dad went back to, to get his doctorate. And that is when I remember, in particular, just spending time driving around with him. And as as goofy and cheesy as this will sound, I remember, because it was on pop radio, for whatever reason, I remember an Air Supply song actually yeah. being a thing. That it was, a, yeah. it was what, the one that you love. And Whoa. for whatever reason, yeah. just something about that melody, when it, when it comes in... At the beginning, and it, right. it's funny. I hadn't heard it in years, and I li just listened to it recently. So, uh. but that's probably the first time that I just really remember going, "Man, this song—it makes me feel something." You know, you're just a little kid, yeah. And you're just like, "Oh no, what is this?" But it it moved me. Probably the thing that then, not too much later on, really like drew me in was was Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. and and in particular the the Thriller album for me. Sure. Just like I would just you know you start hearing those songs and you're just like, "What is this?" Right. And that's another one of those things that I think about. Um, at the time, it was just music. It was just pop music. It was great. But again, that's another one that I recently revisited, mm -hmm. that, that album. And I was just like, man, this is, this is amazing. And it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, the things mm -hmm. that he was doing were so groundbreaking. Yeah. Just as far as just fusing styles and, and genres and all mm -hmm. these things. And, you know. Pulled in Paul McCartney, so we had a little Beatles. There you go, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, now that was that was probably the first thing, not but around that same time within within the genre that I work in mostly these days, I do remember hearing those early Amy Grant songs, and those did move me in a in a huge way. Things like Father's Eyes. Oh yeah, I just remember just mm -hmm. hearing that song because my parents playing it on the record player back before back before vinyl was cool and. Man, that that song, I would just you know, you'd hear it over and over again, and there was just something amazing about about that song. Yeah, it just doesn't the get the power old. of it. No, yeah. and and stands up today. Right. Oh, it totally so does. So many ways. Yeah, it totally does. So yeah, so there there those are some of the things 
I, I wish they were as epic as uh, as the Beatles, but you know, you we can't we don't choose, and that's kind you of know? the fun thing about art, yeah. really. You know, as I as I think about it, you know, even you talking about the, having things kind of teed up, as far as okay, teeing up the idea of what what moves me, what got me here, what what caused me to to want to do this. You know, just the fact that art is this subjective thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it is. It's this. It's not this tangible this tangible thing that you go, okay, cool. If I do this, if I check these boxes, if I do this. If I follow these rules, if I do this chord progression, then I'm guaranteed to you right. know, have a song that's going to be, you know, palatable for the masses. And exactly. they're going to love it. And obviously, you can see things. You can find some formulas and, and you could say that, you know, some people go in and try and create that. But here's the deal. Everybody goes in a room trying to create that. So when somebody says, yep, I, it did what I wanted it to do, it's like, yeah, great. How many tens of thousands of people that same day, we're exactly. trying to write a song, right. doing the same thing, yeah. and they were aiming at that. They wanted, you know, the people, whoever, whoever their audience is, to to love it. So, I, I think that's kind of the part of the cool part about it is you don't know what is gonna what's gonna catch you. There's something in that song still, even when I listen to it, I'm like, oh man, melodically, where they go, some of the chord progressions, I'm like, mm -hmm. ah, oh, that's cool, where that sits in, and it and it, you know, paved a way for you know all the things to come from that as you start then really in, you know, ingesting all this music, all these mm -hmm. different styles and, and different things. And, you know, for me now, I get to be, you know, one of the things that I love about publishing is just the fact that it's, it's a pretty genreless kind of thing. And granted, there are publishers that are very specific. Here's, here's what we do and all, all that we do. But it doesn't have to be, you know, and we're, and we, for, for the most part, centricity tries, we try and dabble in a lot of different things. And we know we can't, you can't be brilliant at everything. Right. But, you know, it, for me, the thing is, is just, does it move me? Does it mm. do something? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I let's, let's yeah. stay on that for a moment. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. you talked about the air supply song. Yeah. I yeah. talked about paperback writer. Right. And it moved us somehow yeah. in, I guess we just have to say an emotional way yeah. that made us aware, maybe in a new way as a kid, to art. Yeah. So what? how do you experience art maybe even other than songwriting? Yeah. Just to kind of chase a bunny trail here for a moment. Is it film? Is yes. it? Is it's all it those things. It's fine it's, art. You know, I can appreciate fine art. I am not one of those great, you know, I, I'm, you know, art historian kind of people that can really dig into all of the, you know, all the technical terms of the texture, right, sure. and whatever, and all the all yeah. the things. But I know if something if something is, is you know, if it moves you, attractive to me yeah, yeah. and and moving. But for me, the the you know the methods that I that I you know uh, partake of <laughs> the most would be mm -hmm. would be Film would be, you know, good books, uh, uh, and then and, and, and then music. I don't want to. I don't go too fast here. Yeah, yeah. I want to milk this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's All good. Right. It's good. So we can we can talk about that. <laughs> well, wait. I, I pushed you yeah. for like the song. And yeah. It got air support. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> the film. Yeah, yeah. So here's an here's an interesting thing about about film. I much like. I mean, your your listeners are are gonna are gonna laugh, but you know, again, SpongeBob. I like, yeah, it's SpongeBob, the, <laughs> Bob, the film, it's like the movie, whatever, whatever it is. Yes. Yeah. That, uh, no, it, it really, it really is one of those funny things. This comes back to really what we're talking about with, with art. And I love the fact that you can have a movie like, you know, Goodwill Hunting mm. or, or, you know, Life is Beautiful. Or, you know, just various films like that that have that have moved me over the years, you know, Saving Pri Private Ryan. Gosh, I mean, there's there's just a lot of movies that I can look back over over the years and you can say, OK, that was that was a profound movie and moved me. Um, but then I can also go, man, I really loved that Marvel film that I, you know, that just because sure. it was a well done yeah, yeah. piece of piece of art. I can look at it re regardless of I think it was. Forgive me if I, you know, I'm not to, I, I'm a big fan of his work, but I, I think it was, I think it was Martin Scorsese that was, that was like kind of dissing on those and calling them, saying that they were more like amusement park rides the Marvel or whatever. Comic movies, yeah. 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 And I'm like, yeah, okay. But, 
you know, me, there's there's a lot of art and a yeah. lot of people. And here's the thing. It's like music. It's like any kind of thing that you're talking about. It's like we can say all day long because we do in the industry. As professionals, we, we go, oh, that's that's terrible or that's or that's great or that's whatever. At the end of the day, the people decide, mm -hmm. you know, the people decide we can say all day long. That's crap. But if the people are ingesting it like by the, they can't get enough of it then okay you know we can we can say it's it's art or not i all that to say i find that i a film that is by far anybody that knows me knows that my favorite movie of all time <laughs> is die hard is the first die no hard no kidding wow um, die hard and and that can easily be dismissed that can easily be one of those things i love a good i love a good action movie i love all those things there's nothing you know nothing wrong with any of those things but if if you look at that movie and and you really start dissecting it and you and you think that was in an era that was that was the late eighties it was in an era when you had all these Arnold Schwarzenegger movies with the one liners you know and you had all the Sylvester Stallone movies and and the whatever you had everything was it was all that bigger than life bombastic kind of kind of a thing with people that were all jacked up yeah right. and and whatever and. And yet you in this thing you had a totally different thing. You had you had this kind of every man kind of guy that was kind of just wise cracking but not but not like over the top. He gets trapped in this crazy situation and 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 is and is kind of thrown into this this thing that like any of us could maybe relate to, as opposed to Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, repelling out of a helicopter and doing right. stuff. And and there <laughs> yes, there's crazy stuff in there. You know, I get it, but it just there were things about it that were so, that so resonated and obviously still, you know, do with so many, but it kind of changed the way that, that that whole genre went from that point on. That became a whole, that's a thing now. That mm -hmm. whole thing, okay, mm -hmm. the person get, gets, a, you know, in the funky situation and it's them against the world and whatever, all these kinds of things. But if you look at how thing, that thing is shot too, if you look at, if you look at the, just the, just the, some of the visuals of that thing, it's it's brilliant. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. The cinematography is is incredible. There are there are some great one liners. You know, Yippie Kaye is <laughs> one of my. You know, I, I I won't finish it, but I but I yeah, but, yeah. but it you know it was it was a moment. So I say all that just to say you you know you can we can go ahead and kind of say yes okay art is this and we start putting it in a, in a place. But you know art art is subjective and that's the beautiful part about this whole thing. So. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing to think that you have the opportunity as a gatekeeper for Centricity Music Publishing and for what happens with the artist and what goes out on the on the label and front and center a boutique label yeah. looking to do something unique, not cookie cutter. And your roster definitely reflects that. But you get to be a gatekeeper. I had that position years ago at Integrity Music when I was working with the label there working with a roster of 18 writers, did over 200 pieces of product. And now it's all democratized, which is a good thing. Democracy is awesome. Sure, sure. But now there are very, very few gatekeepers that have influence over more than one label, right? I mean, right. anyone right. listening can record something on their cell phone and post it on YouTube or wherever in the next half hour. And it just, die on song mountain and the mm -hmm. big giant or sink into the great abyss of mediocrity or you know or go viral right. you know like katie nicole has yeah. done uh, yeah, one of your did. new signs and yeah. so what i'm what i'm what i'm trying to dig for is mm -hmm. how in that little brain of yours yeah. do you discern <laughs> when something might have greater potential than uh, I don't say mediocre, but something that's not quite as developed yeah. as, how, how do you, what do you, I know you can tell me what you're listening Goodness. for, but what is that little spark yeah. in you that goes, okay, I can champion this to the label or to an yeah. artist or yeah. is that a fair question? Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. Well, first, let me just say, I certainly don't make <laughs> those decisions. I'm, I'm one of the decision yeah. makers. Yeah. You're part you know, of it. it's like, that's, that's the whole deal. It's like, you know, yes. As as even even heading up the publishing company, I st I want everybody speaking into it. I want the team to be like, do we all feel that this is a thing? Yes, there's times you know there are times when you just go, I'm going with my gut, and this is right. it, you know, and yeah. and we're gonna do it. But for the most part, it's it is this thing, and and not necessarily so much a democracy as it is just 
you've got a brain trust. You've got people that you trust and, and that you know are going to come, come at this thing possibly from a different angle mm-hmm. and look at this differently than you might affirm what you're, what you're thinking, might, might completely just tear it down right. and go a different. And, and at the end of the day, good news is, you know, we, we have the ability to still try some stuff. But we do, we meet, you know, you talk about, you mentioned John Mays, you know, he heads up A&R at the label and is a dear friend and is, you know, just brilliant at what he does, has done it for a long time mm-hmm. and, and at a high level. And I trust him in that. And we, we actually have, our two teams have weekly meetings where we just play through the stuff and we're just playing stuff for mm-hmm. each other that has, that has come in to, to each of us. Mm-hmm. And just, hey, what do we think? What is, what is this? Let's talk about it. And there, you know, again, art is, art, that's the beautiful thing about art. Is it'll, it, I'll keep saying it. It'll sound, it'll, it'll be a, a dead horse. You can, you can go ahead and, you know, trim out as much as you can. But <laughs> it, it'll, it'll be our title. <laughs> right. But I mean, it's the cool thing is that, is that, you know, one person's art is another person's, you know, mm. whatever. I, you know, I'm sure if there are cinephiles out there that would say, you, you know, if you, you say you love movies, which I do and watch it every kind pretty much well within within reason to to say that then my favorite movie is die hard the a bunch of them will will then you know yeah. go okay well, well whatever <laughs> I, he, now now i don't trust him and you know that's that's just silly but i mean that's the cool part about this whole thing is that you get in here and you start you start hearing things and something is going to hit is going to hit you and yeah. we have to trust our guts and that's the cool part too is that we'll sit in those meetings and w- someone brought it in and they're just like, yeah, here's this. And we're all going, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's nice. That's mm-hmm. good. And you know, this, is, this goes kind of to what you were talking about earlier, the, 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 all the good, which, you know, we, we, there's all the good is the enemy of great and whatever. We have, we have all, the, all the catchphrases out there from the great authors and the great, you know, you know thinkers that, that have dug into that. And it is true. I mean, in our world, good is, you know, I, I can't do anything with good, really. Yeah. Yeah. You know, other than barring some kind of just flukish thing that just happens to to take off and we would all still look at it and go, yeah, that's good. But, you know, I think the cool part is, is you've got if somebody is in there and they can make a case for it, somebody on the team is like, yeah, yeah, I get that. But do you hear this thing in what they're doing? But maybe there's maybe there's a vocal thing that they're doing that's that's unique. Or maybe there's, you know, since we're talking songs, there's just something in there. Man, they're consistently they're writing this their their changes are are just unique. The things that they're doing are there. Yeah, lyrically you're right. That it's they're not saying anything new. It's just it's not doing the thing. But but I think if we got them in the right rooms with the yeah. right people, if we did yeah. this, there's something here. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's the part that we have to just trust at the end of, end of the day. And you know, I mean, we've we've both done it where you believe in something and you're like, this is the thing. And you do all the stuff. And you deliver it out to the world, and the world says, "Nah, yeah. I don't really care." Me, uh, yeah, it's like that's all right, thank you. And then, and then on the flip side, you have the ones that you believe in that do. Just people connect, and they're like, "Yes, this is what we've been waiting for." Mm-hmm. And I, I think, I think one of the things you know, we talked about this. We talked about feel. Uh, we talked about moving. You know, just something that moves you. And I think the the thing that I've landed on, I'll talk about a fusion of the two of my loves, which is film and, and music. And that is the, the sync world, the, the synchronization of music to film. And it has been, become a big thing, the music world in, in the last 20 years and, and went from, went from being the sellout, you know, you'd have all these big artists that would never, we're never licensing our stuff to now. They're just like, they're pretty much writing Clamoring. stuff for it. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah. here. And it is, it's, it's a great thing. I think that unique thing, because there's a lot that's been said, and you've probably covered it plenty here, but, but I think it's, it's important to talk about, is I've tried to teach people, because that is, has been a part of my world for the last 20 years or so, and I try and teach writers and artists how to do that, and I would ha- say different things about, oh, you can you know, try and say... Say, say something without saying anything at all and whatever. It's all these different things. So how to write for sync. Right, how to yeah, write for yeah, this yeah. specific world. And there's a lot of things and you can, you, you know. But what I've really distilled it down to uh, at the end of the day is you need to make somebody feel something. Mm-hmm. And, and that should be, you know, that should seem super obvious. Shouldn't but, it though? But, but the reality is, is that you have to think about this moment because people do, they overthink it. 
they'll do this thing. I'm, I wrote this song because I love this series and I know they're making a movie. And so they do all this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, 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 that's too specific. It's too whatever. All these things. And then some are too vague. You're like, they're trying to be all things to all people. Right. And I think the, the reality is, back to your comment about art, create art because when you and I are watching a movie and you know when something just works and you're just like, oh, it just fits. It just feels right. You may not even mm-hmm. be aware of it. Yeah. The best ones you're you're either a not aware of at all, or you're like, oh my goodness, this is brilliant. This this moment that is the mm-hmm. song for mm-hmm. the for this thing. Otherwise, otherwise you've got the situation where it's just like, okay, whatever. It's just filler. It's there, or it's like, this is terrible. Who did this? Who in the world did this? And it totally pulls you out of the scene, right? And right. be just because the the song is so bad. Or, or the performance is so bad, or whatever the thing is, or it's just too far in, up in the mix, mm-hmm. all these things. Mm-hmm. And so when that's brilliant, when it does the thing, all it does is just enhance everything. Right. It makes you, it, it takes that emotion and it jacks it up to a new level. And so that on, honestly is what we do in all areas of music. I mean, we're, you know, the, the joy of, of art in general, again, we'll just keep coming back to this thing, <laughs> is make, Make you feel something, yeah. You know, is to move you, and it's so hard to teach that to people. Oh my they and, and all the hundreds of writers we work with yes. here at Nashville Christian Songwriters, and through our eight week online program, which we have a couple of people who've had songs nominated for Grammys, mm-hmm. which is cool. That's our awesome. first Grammy noms, people that have gone through our our training, and people that have stepped into their their ministries at a higher level. Yeah. But that has always been the challenge is to help them understand you're inviting someone into an emotion yeah. here. You're not just stating facts about God that we've heard a million times. You're creating some kind of atmosphere. And, you know, two of my favorite writers that, that opened me up to a lot of that, Chad, are uh, All Sons and Daughters, mm-hmm. uh, David and Leslie. Yep. You know, they're powerful. And when I heard Brokenness aside, if you remember that song, you know, will your grace run out if I tell you lies? Because all I know is how to run. But you are a say, I am a sinner. If it's not one thing, it's another. Caught up in words, tangled in lies. But you are a savior and you take brokenness aside and make it beautiful. I teach from that song a lot because it was the first kind of confessional mm-hmm. worship song I ever yeah. heard and came out of their community here in, in town. But that's an emotion yeah, that taps absolutely. into something that I felt, you know, and yeah. my own crappy centeredness, you know, yeah. and it, it, it brought me into that confessional space. And it's hard to give that to writers, oh, right? That emotional piece, because mm-hmm. they're looking at, I don't know what they're looking at, but they're certainly not understanding that. Yeah. How do you coach people yeah. into emotional transparency, language? messaging in their yeah. songs. Yeah, I mean, it's it's such a tricky thing. Like you said, I mean, there's there's not... I, and again, that's what makes it art, is the thing that it's not this cookie cutter thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there's a difference between what we're talking about here and, you know, a paint by numbers thing that, that you know, somebody creates and it's like, okay, cool, I know, I know how to do this. But at the same time, to your point, there are things that you, we can do to kind of just try and help them. And some of it is just, hey, get out of your own way. Yeah. You know, they're... This is an issue just in life in general, and that is comparison. And, and it's, it'll, it'll be a struggle for all of us. For, uh, there probably are some people that are elevated to a, to a higher plane than, than I that don't, that don't deal with that. <laughs> the but, light. But, right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> they're, they're, they're fully self-actualized or whatever, yeah, well, whatever that thing not is. Me, bro. Um, not and, me, bro. Yeah. And so I think for the most of us mere mortals, this, this <laughs> thing is, is a thing. And comparison, while, while, you know the the you know you talk about all art has been has been created. Let's let's be real. You know, I mean, especially we're talking music. Mm-hmm. Twelve notes. Everything's been written. It's all been written. So go ahead and take that off the you know the plate there as as a goal for somebody. I'm going right. to write something that's never been written. Before. Create nope. a genre. Somebody uh, yeah, somebody yeah. else has already done it. Put your spin on it. Everything is copying something, you know. Uh, most pop music emulates the Beatles, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in mm-hmm. some, in some, and gives a nod whether they know it or not. Yeah. And they they were giving a nod to great blues artists Absolutely. and other people, yeah. them and who were giving great Elvis. Nod, you know, it's like yeah. you go you go all the way. So, in that whole thing, you you oh wow, 
We're gonna, this is where we're going to want to edit. Uh, where was I going with that? What, what were we just talking about? We were talking about comparison. Oh, yes. Comparison. Thank you. Or you can just leave it in and it can I be might. great. It can I be might. great flow yeah. for it. But when we're talking about that, that thing, so often I see people delivering stuff that's like, hey, so and so that, you know, you can either tell whether they tell you or not, you can tell, hey, you were just trying to copy or exactly. do a version of yeah. this, or this seems to be working. So I'm going to do my version of, of this. And that almost never works. You know, it, it's like, you know, mm. it's like the worship songs in particular, worship songs where you try and write a so worship song for the world. You go, I'm going to yeah. write this all inclusive worship song that everyone will connect for. It's for all people. And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, it'll mm -hmm. be for nobody. Yeah, exactly. Just so you know. I'd way rather write the song that is that is so personal and so just connected to who you are and and your own life or what your Absolutely. church is going through. Those are yeah. the ones that people connect with. Mm -hmm. And so it's true for all the areas. And and that's why I say when I say get out of your own way is that people try and go, okay, how do I do this? And and we have this tricky thing. We do have this. We walk this tightrope because in the Christian genre, like so many. Radio is still a key mm -hmm. driver of all things mm -hmm. that make this a business, which is great. And we're super grateful for that. And radio has very specific things that they want to hear or don't want to hear. And yet then they'll, of course, play something that completely goes counter to that as well. Right, exactly. And it's their prerogative. Yeah, yeah. But, but the reality is th that we can sometimes, on, on the publishing and the label side, get super myopic about, okay, you can't do this, can't do that. Sorry, you can't, you know, this is a thing. And then that gets transferred onto the writers, onto the artists as they're creating. And they're like, oh, you know, we could never say that or we can't do, right. you know, all of these, all of these different things. And, and it's, that's the danger. That's the it, danger yeah. is that then you, then you, then you forget why you got into this in the first exactly. place. And that's, that's the whole thing for you and I, you know, regardless of where that, that first seed came from, that was the thing that set us on a, on a journey. To then be like, okay, I've got to consume all of this. This this makes me feel something. What? How do I? How do I experience this more? And oh, I can't get enough of this. Mm -hmm. The artists, the writers, they got into this because they were passionate about it. They loved it. They didn't first sit down at a keyboard or on the guitar or wherever, whatever they were doing, and thought, man, how can I make money at this? I mean, most, right? I would say yeah. without almost yeah. without exception, that's not where it started. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the world is what it is, and it and it. And comes in and, and does that and great that's why we have a business but i think it's that recapturing of that thing of like hey why did you get into this in the first place what are what are you you know tap into that thing in you that you just create out of a place yeah. of creating yeah and it and i say all that to say it's still this fine line we walk this tightrope of going okay we need that but we need commercial songs and so it's kind of this balance of just letting them kind of do their thing i i have um a writer and and a friend, a longtime friend, who I, I think he'll be okay for me to just you know to to rat him out here you know in in this space because because I I do love him and and I'm I'm proud of him for just watching what he's done. But he's just a he's a phenomenal writer. His name is Ross King. I know Ross. And yeah, he's been on the show. There you go. Yeah, good guy. He's great. And Ross is super talented, and he does his best work, in my opinion. When he's just Ross King, and he just he brings his thing to mm -hmm. to what people do, to, and instead of trying to try to just and, and as a staff writer, because he does have his own artistry, his own art indie artistry outside of that, but as a staff writer in that role, he is coming alongside to serve other artists. But but he can then the art that he creates as an artist is so inspired, yeah, and so, so creative, mm -hmm. and so man. Where did that come from? And you just said that and mm -hmm. all those things. And then he can get in a room sometimes and be like, oh, no, we can't say that because, you know, this and that. And, and I think one of the reasons that, you know, this is this is a thing that is and this isn't dogging on him at all. He's trying to do his job. But I but I think I've encouraged him a lot and, and others have, too, of just going, hey, the, the reason people want to write with you is because you do you bring something. Mm -hmm. You bring mm -hmm. something that is that is unique and different. And that that's that's when you're going to win mm -hmm. in that space. Mm -hmm. And once again, that's him being authentic to who yeah. he is. And, and you know, I mean, he, he has right now, uh, you know, one of his songs that he did in his. This is case in point. He did it for his own artistry, and now another artist that is a signed artist with our, our genre 
has now covered that song mm. that is a hundred percent Ross song. That's so cool. Um, and is now going it's now going to radio right now and That's just great. starting to be added at who radio is, can right you now. Share who that is? Yeah, it's Josh Wilson. Okay. Has is recorded it and has recorded it. And this song is called Things That I'm Afraid of. Oh, I know um, that song. And, uh, yeah, I know I know and, that song from Ross. And here it is going to radio. As that that is not a song that you would go, oh yeah, this is for sure yeah. that. But it, what a brilliant song! Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a brilliant song. Mm -hmm. It's so well crafted, and I think again, that's the thing. Everybody needs to tap into what is their what is their thing right. that makes them unique. And don't try and when you're trying to make somebody feel something, when you're trying to move them, don't don't then go, okay, well, so and so moved me, so I'm going to write my song like that. Like that, yeah. You, know, yeah. you have to kind of default. And yes, we're all an amalgam of all of our ins inspirations and, and influences. I get that. But, but you have to do your version. Yeah, yeah. And that's really fascinating and something that we emphasize in our coaching that you're, you, but you do have to know the craft. You do. Right? And maybe we'll say this, it's a longer discussion, maybe for next time you come on the show, but that's what we teach is the craft Absolutely. We can't give the X factor to people. We can't lay hands nope. on people's speaking tongues and then they have this amazing uniqueness yeah. about them. They have to know what that is or be in the process of discovering that yeah. so that they can be unique and stand out in the way that they approach. And so we, yeah. we're we not a cookie cutter coaching company. We really are looking to release the best yeah. version of these people in the way that they're expressing themselves. So. Yeah, I love it. So all this is reminding me of a story. Yeah. Years ago, my wife and young daughter and I were in one of the downtown Chicago museums of modern art. I can't remember which exactly which one. But we had walked into the modern, you know, section mm -hmm. and their arms coming out of the floor yep. and bizarre things <laughs> hanging around, right? And so it was a classic moment. But we're in there and we're kind of looking around like Oh yeah, this is, you know, this is really cool. And we're kind of appreciating the yeah. technique and, you know, what people were trying to do with it. You know, some of that stuff's pretty yeah, bizarre. Absolutely. And I remember the door flew open. It was really quiet. I mean, you know, like a library, very silent. Nobody's really talking loud. And <laughs> this, this guy, I, I, I'm not stereotyping, but literally it was, looked like a farmer, looked mm -hmm. like he just walked off the dairy farm. The door flew open. He comes in in overalls and a T-shirt. And again, I'm not trying to be dismissive or mean. I'm just saying uh, this is who it was, right? Yeah. Big old guy. I mean, I can almost see him in my mind. This was decades ago. Door flew open. He took one look around, and he literally almost yelled, Hell, this ain't art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So art is subjective, yes. uh, you know, to, yes. to pursue art is to be misunderstood. Yep. It's to struggle. Yep. It's to probably not make a whole lot of money right. unless something you do goes viral. But I think in, in the end, if I'm hearing you correctly, and it's certainly I, this is my opinion, it's about getting down to your unique signature in the way that you approach lyric writing in songs or the way you use color palettes in art, the way you move your body in dance, the way you write prose, mm -hmm. nonfiction or fiction, but how you show up in the world. And one of the, one of the things that I've quote a lot, I quote you from our first podcast when you said, we're not looking for good songs. Mm -hmm. We're not even looking for great songs. We're looking for phenomenal songs. Yep. So I encourage the writers I work with to know that that's your goal. It's not to go chase down Chad Segura, you know, and make him listen to your stuff. It's for you to go make as much noise as you can where you are yes. and to really stir something up. Then Chad's going to be calling you, yeah. right? But it's learning to show uh, The other quote I love is Sal Oliver, producer. Sal's it, yeah. so cool. And <laughs> Sal, in one of his Facebook posts, and I, I totally snagged it and started teaching it, but you are responsible for how you show up in the world. Mm. It's really about digging. Isn't that good? Yeah, it's like it's you, really it, it's up to you. Chad's not going to make you a star. John no. Mays isn't going to make you the next Lauren Daigle. It's really about you going out and really investing not only in yourself, but in your potential audience, no matter yeah. what you do, Absolutely. you know? And so, Absolutely. Chad, we need, to, we need to continue this and go even deeper. And I think yeah. it'd be really cool to have you and John on and maybe talk about some of the artists that you're developing. Kobe James, 
Uh, one of yep. your young 20-year-olds uh, was sitting here in the Chiz Pod a week ago and blew <laughs> me away. I mean, the dude is a rock star with those, uh, not only with his guitar skills, but his vocal skills yeah. are just oh, yeah. mad. And just you guys are just releasing Shackles uh, mm -hmm. cover yep. from Mary Mary, which is amazing. And he actually sat here and performed that acoustically. Oh, sweet. And so a very, very cool guy. So it'd be fun to get into some of the 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 principles that you're using to develop yeah. artists and to showcase some of the things you guys are doing. So hope you'll come back and do that. Absolutely. Love to. Well, hell, this ain't art. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all in the eye uh, it has the beholder. Chess Aguirre, thanks so much, man. Thank you. Hey, thanks for joining us on the show today. I hope that you'll jump over to NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com and check out all the resources there to encourage you in your own songwriting. And if you like what we're doing, why not share this episode out on your socials? You can find the link in the show notes. We'll see you next time.